Morning everybody, Troy from the Do-It-Yourself World and the Off-Grid Project. 75 degrees in the tiny house on wheels and 40 out. Uh, I could improve the humidity in here. Now it's too low instead of too high. But it's otherwise comfy here right now. Um, rainy and dark out. Really, really dark. Oop, Felix the cat saying hi. I've got an extension cord here because I was working in the house the other day and uh, just coiled that up. That was running to my upstairs. Felix! Psst. Felix the cat. Get used to the camera. He's going to be a show off like baby soon. Oh, he went down. So, I'm going to show you what happened over, uh, well, it's been raining for a few hours. And the new tiny house roof and the off-grid solar battery shed is really collecting some rainwater. And I've got to get out there and finish the system rain or shine today. So let me show you what's going on. I got a decent amount of water coming through here and uh, a good rainstorm is a good indicator of where your mistakes are and your weak points in your system and I have water passing through my camera's getting wet I have water passing through between the uh, rain gutter and the roof here which I did not expect because I put that special lip on there um, but it is obviously leaking through anyway, so I'm going to have to fix that. Uh, I guess that extra special lip that I bought that was intended for that particular purpose didn't have enough of a lip on it. We've got a decent amount of water pouring into here, and I've got 50 gallons this morning al al already, just this morning in a few hours. Uh, I wouldn't call it a... A serious torrential downpour by any means, but it's definitely filling that bucket up. And I'm going to keep an eye on it. And soon I'll be switching over the rain gutter to go into a 40 gallon tank, which I'll set up next to this in a little bit here. Inside I have a 40 gallon tank that I was using temporarily to catch rainwater. And I'm just going to reroute this drip into there for now. And um, I still have to finish working on these walls and get this covered before I route the rainwater into the shed. But at least for now I am capturing the water and it is usable. And any sediment and debris will go to the bottom of the tank and I will just siphon off or pump off what I need from the top. And I do not drink this water. There are so many comments going on about me drinking the water and getting sick. I do not drink this water. Some of these containers I'm using are not food grade. The uh, big 275 gallon tank, you know, though it is food grade and only contained food grade alcohol, it gives a very unpleasant plastic taste to the water, similar to a army canteen, which I detest. I cannot stand the flavor of the water in an army canteen. And if anybody's drank out of one of them, you know what I mean. It cannot be healthy because it tastes just like plastic. Anyway, I don't drink the water at all. I uh, have been using spring water from a nearby spring for drinking. So, well, I've got to go and empty that rest of that 40 gallon tank and bring it out here and get it ready for the switchover. I've got the 55 gallon drum moved. Actually, I think it's a 40 gallon drum. Anyway, and then I've got the big 40 gallon tank propped up underneath there so I can capture some more water. Now that has some plastic particles in it, so I'll have to filter that before I put it into my system. So I'm going to create a little bit of a, a bucket sand filter to filter out the water before I use it. And then that there is going to fill up the 40 gallon tank probably quite quickly and I've got to get this wall situated so I can start gathering water in the tote I think I might just cut the hole and do it because it's just going to rain all day and I've got to get start collecting this water so the problem is and I'll show you inside why I've been hesitant I want to insulate this wall and then I also want to put the paneling in before I really fill this tote. But this is free water coming in right now, so I think I'm just going to start using it, take advantage of it, so I don't lose it all. Um, 
a shame to watch all that go out on the ground once that other tank fills up. Then I can then, after gathering it, I can later move it to different containers to empty the tote and finish that wall as needed. But I still get a lot of work to do on this shed before I'm at that stage where I can insulate. I did buy the insulation, but as you can see, I still have some holes to patch up in the old uh, materials I've used before I can do that. So, now there's something else interesting. Although the there's no flashing or anything up there, that's just resting up against there. It appears that there's no water coming inside the shed between the tiny house and the shed roof. So I did push the shed roof up tight against the tiny house, although it's not attached and there's no flashing. So I um, think about moving my solar charge controllers outside and fasten it on the wall here where I've got my battery fittings. I'm thinking about since it's a rainy day anyway and there's no sun today and no solar power being gathered and collected it would say perfect time to rewire the entire tiny house electrical system with shorter fatter wires and uh, better connections and stuff so that would be a good place for them on this wall of the tiny house inside the shed but I'm reluctant to do it right now until after I put some flashing up there because it could leak and I hate to have that happen. But anyway, I'm giving it some thought here whether I'm going to do that and make that move. And that's the old water heater. Um, I haven't put in the new one until after I finish closing these gaps and insulating this room so it won't freeze. So I've got quite a bit to do yet. Uh, my water has been slightly frozen in the mornings occasionally. Obviously that is going to happen but nothing has been harmed and I still have had running water each day but uh, I do want to finish this system properly and that would mean mounting the water pumps and everything on the wall of the tiny house as well that's why I cleaned out this area here too and I've got some storage containers that's my survival gear from the old truck camper that I've got to find a home for actually I'm going to sell off most of it I'm going to just uh, sort out this stuff and sell it off and start downsizing and uh, minimizing because I had a lot of stuff in that truck camper through the years just massively stockpiled and although I want to have a survival vehicle I want to downsize and not have so much gear I had too much redundancy and uh, that's just that was just overkill